Hi, Lou here to talk about something that's unusual, I suppose, and has a long title, Good versus Weak Play of Games Involving Chance and Randomness, and how this affects game design. In other words, people who don't deal very well with chance and randomness. But it's a overall question of whether people are good players as well. So many games involve chance or randomness in some way, whether it's dice or cards or hidden information or having more than two players or something else. Just having two players doesn't involve it because you can use game theory techniques and minimaxing techniques and assume that the opponent is a perfect player and then it doesn't matter that there's another human involved. Now if there's no uncertainty of any kind, you have a puzzle such as chess or checkers or tic-tac-toe. Chess and checkers are too complicated for humans to entirely solve, although checkers, some humans have come close. Uh, tic-tac-toe, of course, is very easy to solve and many, many people have and no longer play it once they figure it out. Think about the effects of chance or randomness. Think about gambling. Of course, the smart thing to do is not to do it at all. But people like the thrill, I guess, of gambling. My sister, for example, will go to a casino and she takes $20 or whatever and she'll play until she loses it or until she doesn't lose it. Think also of the difference between small incre incremental bets at near 50-50 odds and all in or, for example, betting on just one number in roulette. Even though technically the odds amount to the same thing, it's certainly different in how you're managing your chance. Now this next quote I've lost the source for. I could even be quoting myself. I don't know. People who don't take chances will never be lucky. And the events you describe are the ones people remember. I don't know what the event was being discussed. Probably he failed just as often as he succeeded, but that was unremarkable, hence forgotten. In other words, if you play for an adrenaline rush of feeling lucky, then you're going to fail to win more than people who manage things carefully. So what's your objective as a player? Is it to win or succeed, or is it to get a rush? This is especially obvious in something like Dungeons & Dragons, 1st edition or 5th edition specifically. There's lots of dice rolling, but you can limit how much you depend on getting lucky or not getting lucky. There's still lots that's memorable, but the managers are a lot more likely to succeed than the people who are trying to get lucky and get a rush. And of course you can see this in people's lifestyles. Some people say they don't have any money, quote unquote but often it's because they spend unnecessarily or even frivolously. Uh, a simple example is they, instead of planning shopping trips, they travel anytime they need something, and travel costs money. Um, more obviously, they spend on unnecessaries. For example, hundreds or more on getting your nails done, or on Air Jordans, or on $1,100 cell phones. Some people will spend that money, some people won't. So, people earning the same can have a lot more money because they don't waste it. And relying on getting lucky is like wasting your money. And if you do either consistently, you'll suffer for it. Uh, my motto is, he who lives by the dice, dies by the dice. Here's another maximum. Good game players think about strategies. Average game players think about puzzle solutions or paths to victory. And weak game players think about getting lucky. And I should interject here, the majority of games, ta both tabletop and video, are much more puzzles than they are games. Puzzles have always correct solutions. Games do not. How does this affect game design? Well, there's a big question in game design. Do you design for experts, for average players, or for weak players? And keeping in mind that weak players are probably the most numerous now. 
You can't do all three in one version of a game. I think the weak players tend to be weaker than in the past. A lot of them are coming from people who aren't lifelong gamers or coming from party gamers. And so they haven't learned to manage their, their chance and randomness. So if you design for today's weak players, unfortunately, you won't have a game with much, if any, meat in it. It won't be an intellectual pastime. It'll be something else. Now, that might be what you want. But sometimes people want to design something that's intellectual. Giving the paucity of players who want to be experts or to gain mastery, it may be wise to design for the average player. Keeping in mind there'll be fewer average players than weak players. Now you can have multiple versions of the same game that are aimed at different levels in many cases, but it's a lot of work because they are different games really. Moreover, oddly enough, multiple versions are regarded as somehow, well, odd. People worship the published version of a game as though that's the only way it could be until the expansions, of course. What's needed to play well? Knowing when to conserve, when not to take a chance, and a good grasp of simple probability, which unfortunately is fairly rare. Now here's an example of poor management. And the quote, unknown quote that I gave you earlier may have been in response to this. I don't know. This is from Randall Bart. In Stone Age, it's best to run a little heavy on resources until the last turn rather than risk coming up short. I saw a player who kept dancing close to the edge and complaining about his luck when he fell short. I figure about ten times he risked a one-third chance of disaster and got screwed three times, while about four times I risked a one-sixth chance of disaster and got screwed once. What did he take away? The dice screwed him three times as often as they screwed me. Unquote. If you don't recognize from that example that the fail guy had better luck than Randall Bart, strictly considering probabilities, then you have some work to do. Clearly, the other guy was luckier than Randall Bart. Now this brings up uh, a topic, the danger of randomized catch-up mechanisms. In games with little player interaction, there's no way for the players to catch up when they fall behind. This is a game for more than two players. So sometimes a catch-up mechanism is built into the game. Unfortunately, these mechanisms often amount to letting a player take a poor risk for a big reward. And then some players blame the game when they fail. Now, I design games where there are ways for the players to help or hinder each other so this problem doesn't come up, but in low interaction games it's a very important problem. Finally, keep in mind you as the game designer could be blamed by weak players for their inadequacies. And I'll leave you with that. Thanks for listening.